the project originated in 2021 and we had some financial support from the then CCG um, to, to run with the project uh, and this was something we, we put down on paper that we wanted to formally support our mildly frail people, the sort of developing frail. Uh, we wanted to get in there, we wanted to get stitch in time. In the NHS we're used to putting sticky plasters on to picking people up when they fall over and mending things. And actually, we want to try and prevent some of these things happening. This was just about the whole person, about their physical well-being, about exercises, and looking after themselves. The whole idea was to look at a proactive approach to finding and assessing patients for the early signs of vulnerability and frailty. We wanted to reach out to this population, the over 65s population, um, and a lot of them we knew already, but a lot we didn't know. And so we reached out with a series of 10 questions and we were blown away by the response. Over a third of this population voiced unmet need. We have currently about 12 classes within Tewkesbury and surrounding areas and that ranges from strength and balance groups to specialist disability group for learning disabilities and dementia groups. Um, and they go out throughout Tewkesbury most days of the week. I think we're lucky in the fact that we're the I would say the linchpin of the communication because we have access to the patients. And working across social care and all of the organisations, what we can do is signpost the people to them. So that partnership works. We know what's needed, the patients tell us, but we can't do it on our own. The idea that people who otherwise would end up being, you know, probably in hospital with a fall, have through this programme engaged in activity not just physical activity, social activity as well, which has meant you know, they'll have uh, a greater degree of um, physical resilience and they'll have to spend more time in the community and also be part of that community. So it tackles isolation and loneliness, as well as the sort of the frailty you know, and the potential ill health that follows a fall. And I think it's a testament to you know, the my the medical practice and the, the wellbeing team that this programme is so successful. We've done two questionnaires for the strength and balance and we pick a full week of patients who've gone to any class in the week, no matter what, and ask them all the same questions. And the biggest things that they, that they improved is their strength and balance, but their, their sense of, of well-being, that, that's the second. Alongside the exercise group, we found it really beneficial to do a social bit afterwards. So that's with tea and coffee and um, the health and wellbeing team. We invite the social prescribing team, we invite other people to come along. Well, I think the value of the partnership working is that we're all out there doing our thing, but you get so many people focused on so many aspects of health and wellbeing because it's not just the medical aspects of health, it's a whole societal community aspects. And by bringing the partners together, health and social care, working with the public sector and particularly the voluntary sector, you can ensure that we're all focused on the same things. And by focusing on the same things, we can actually really make a difference. So it's that partnership working with well-being and health at the core. We're quite proud of what we've done, um, but it's not rocket science. Nothing of what we've done has been clever. It's just been common sense been led by what the patients have told us. I don't just feel proud, I feel privileged to be able to have made a difference to the community.